you want to touch it after I charge it up? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You just do it? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Go, go, go before it leaks off. Hi, I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and we're gonna show you how to make a 200,000 volt capacitor. The one that she made me burn my finger on. It didn't burn your finger. Yeah, it didn't burn it. Come that on. It sounded a lot more dramatic. It was, it didn't hurt. I mean, I didn't have to do it. This is a DIY homemade capacitor. We first created a wand by taping wire to a cake pan, made the end of the wand with a giant round screw with a spherical neodymium magnet on it, a plastic washer for a spark gap, and a smaller metal ball on top. Threaded all that through PVC pipe, place polycarbonate on the cake pan, cut a smooth circle from a metal sheet, tape that to the bottom of a metal bowl with a conducting metal tape, put the bowl on top of the polycarbonate, taped it all together, and voila! Okay, it's done. It's done. It's done. <laughs> Now what? Now you can charge up the bowl by rubbing a paper towel wrapped around a long PVC pipe with some insulating grip from foam and a t-shirt. And then discharge it with the wand to create a spark like this. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. That is the contraption Ashley agreed to touch. You seriously, you have to just go for it though because- like, I know! Because <laughs> if you go slowly- I'm not gonna look. It's gonna make it fizzle. I'm not gonna look. Just like- Should I do my pinky or my index finger? Whichever one you think will hurt the most. <laughs> go for it. Go, go, go before it leaks off. <laughs> but you touched it. I bet there's still some on there. Oh! <laughs> The reason the spark doesn't look as epic when Ashley touched the bowl is mainly because she's not connected to the lower plate of the capacitor, like the wand is. What we made here is a capacitor. What's a capacitor? Well, if charges are like cars, then a capacitor is like a parking lot. It's like a tiny battery. But this is not small, you say. Well, it would only power a light bulb for a fraction of a second. So by that measure, it's tiny. Our capacitor is two metal plates, the cake pan on the bottom and the metal sheet on top connected to the bowl, separated by polycarbonate or Teflon or some other dielectric. We charge up the capacitor by dumping charge onto the bowl. The charge spreads out and onto the sheet metal too. Because metal is a conductor and like charges repel so they spread out where they can, you know? Like fancy cars taking up lots of space in the parking lot. Keep charging up the metal and eventually charge starts leaking off because it gets too crowded with those like charges. Charges. That's why we have the lower plate and the dielectric material in between. The lower plate gets an induced positive charge which acts to kind of hold more negative charges on the top plate because it pulls on them. And the dielectric is a magical material. Inside a dielectric, polarized molecules get aligned with the electric field caused by the charged plates so it gets its own electric field going and then passes along its electric pull, keeping more charges on the top and bottom plate. But the dielectric itself doesn't allow any charges to flow through. So it's like a store next to the parking lot that keeps the cars there for its great discount sales, but doesn't actually let any cars drive through it. So then we can build up enough charge that the high voltage breaks down air and the charges leap through the air and we see that as a giant spark. <laughs> After many days of trying, the length of our longest spark was 10 centimeters, which tells us we built up 200,000 volts on the bowl as a conservative estimate, because the dielectric strength of air is about 30,000 volts per centimeter, depending on humidity and temperature and so forth. But this was after many days of trial and error. The PVC pipe is an insulator. So one of the key differences between an insulator and a conductor is that when we're creating charge on the insulator, the charge doesn't move around evenly, it kind of stays put. Yeah, yeah. So when we were first trying it, we were just trying to rub the PVC pipe, get that charge build up, and then just tap it to the bowl, but it's only gonna pass the charges from that one little area that touched the metal. You need to touch the entire PVC pipe across the metal. I was gonna wait to tell you on camera, but I told you earlier that I deleted like all of the footage. Uh, wait, we did this for three yeah, days. We did this you for three. deleted all three days of footage? I mean, two out of three. This contraption. Yeah. So first, we just had this. And we realized that as we were charging it up, we were hearing a lot of static electricity being built up, but we also felt it on our arms. And first we were like, wow, that's cool. My arm hair is <laughs> standing up like porcupine. This foam wasn't a very good insulator. So to help that, we wrapped this piece of fabric around, which did the job. So you watched us make an awesome capacitor. I definitely encourage you to try this at home. It was super fun to go through the process to get the materials, to test things out, to fail for four days. No. 
Oh man. Ooh. Add that to the things that hasn't worked for us. That wasn't as big. It wasn't as big. Day three. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. didn't work like you expected. Like, meh, that's disappointing. But then Lodge actually gets shocked. <laughs> Best part. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Honestly, what was fun was literally like the trial and error. It was very maybe yeah. like fifth grade science project-y. <laughs> no, honestly, like no, yeah, no, no was... any like sibling, cousins, neighbors doing a science project. Like this is, this is gonna get you first place. Yeah, thank you for watching this video and uh, come back for more physics. Hey, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and also the little notification bell next to it so you're, uh, you're updated when I have a new video. And happy, happy physicsing. Hey, so right now with me right here, I have Matt from PBS Space Time. Hey guys. Which is an awesome show. You should definitely check it out. I've got a link in the description and in the card somewhere. Well, Diana, thank you for having me on Physics Girl. This is amazing. <laughs> You know, Matt, one thing I really like about your show is that you go really in depth on topics. Like, you don't hold back. There's a great series of videos you have on different quantum mechanics topics. You know, one thing I really like about Physics School is it explains complex stuff in such understandable ways. I try. Using such simple language. But I'm a kind of jargony kind of guy. I love those long, sciencey words. But it's hard to keep track of them sometimes. So I have a challenge for you. Okay. I would love you to do an episode in which you explain the five most jargony and commonly encountered modern physics words in simple English. Done. But I want you to use only the 1,000 most common words in the English language to do that. <laughs> That's going to be a little harder. Yeah. But challenge accepted. Keep watching Physics Girl because we're going to hold you to this, Diana. <laughs>